Hi guys, I'm Friendly Developer. Today I'm here to walk you through a very small JavaScript web app which has a really cool shadow effect as you can see whenever I move my mouse around shadow moves accordingly opposite to the mouse. So let's just start with it. Okay, uh, let me create a simple HTML structure with some head and body let's make a uh, heading which will be our developer let me give some style to that just to check we I'll show by running this server I have installed an extension called live server in VS code this is a really useful server which which automatically starts the server for you. So I right click and open this page in the live server. Right now it doesn't look much because we haven't added the styles. So let me add that h1. I'll give you an absolute position and I'll center this at the center of the screen. Oh, okay. So if I see now, the font size needs to be bigger font size let's give it 7 em yes but it look it doesn't look that centered because only the starting part of the text is at the center so let's fix it let's transform and translate this left to 50 percent and right to 50 percent so now it's centered so what are we missing the background color for the body Okay, body background color is let's say light cyan. Yes, we're almost there. Okay, all that is left to add is this cool shadow effect. This is really simple, just takes a couple of lines in JavaScript, around 10 to 10 lines. That's all it is. So Let's include our JavaScript file here. Script source is main, and uh, we start by taking the element, taking start by taking this element reference to this element. So how do I do that? I do document dot get element by ID of name. I haven't given any ID to this heading so let me give some ID let's say name so what I want to do right now is get the position of this text X and Y coordinates of this text and uh, hopefully it's also its width so this is the element and I want to get its uh, x and y position so if i call this get bounding rect on this element i get an object which has x y height width and all those other properties so document dot get element by id i get my element from its name so this is my element now i want its x y height and width which I can get by calling get bounding rect client. Okay, I could have just copied it anyway. Get bounding client rect. So now that we have x, y, height, and width, what we do is uh, we get the position of the mouse every time the mouse moves so that we recalculate where the position of shadow should be and eventually set the shadow for this element so what do we do how do we do that we add an event listener what it should listen to it should listen to mouse move because whenever the mouse moves i want it to call a function so this is the function that's called uh, this function is given some info about the mouse position of the mouse let's see how what is the structure of that data 
so if I open my console using F12 or uh, uh, there is a function instead of mouse move okay whenever I move my mouse the function is called and it receives the info object which contains the x and y position of my mouse x given given by client x and client x and client y which should give us the more positions of mouse so just let's just store that value let's remove this console log mm. mouse x and mouse y let's take the value from the info dot client x and uh, info dot client y yes so we got the position of the mouse we have the position of our heading all we have to do is find the position of shadow where should it be so the way we do that is pretty simple I'll show a very simple diagram what we have is uh, the position of mouse let's say this is the mouse and uh, this is our heading okay which contains the developer we have the position of heading which is represented by this line called C and we have our mouse which is represented by this line called A all these position coordinates are taken from the top left portion of the screen so I have represented this as an arrow mark from top left to the uh, mouse pointer and from top left to the title so what we want is the position for the shadow in the opposite direction of the mouse that's why which is this line B you can uh, treat this as vectors if you have learnt any of that vectors in your physics or mathematics class but anyway um, this B is the vector or B is the line that we are looking for in the opposite direction so if you have read vector algebra I would know that since C is in the opposite direction to this following arrow marks A and B we can write an equation which says C is equal to A plus B so B is C minus A where C is the position of our heading and uh, A is the vector for our mouse so what we do is to get so B is the shadow that we are looking for B is the position for the shadow that we are looking for so we take the shadow shadow is it will have its x property and y property we obtain the shadow by subtracting mouse direction mouse vector a from uh, the elements position vector so elements position minus mouse x similarly elements position in y coordinate minus mouse y so we now have our shadow let me log this console log this um, c hmm. i had a misspell here anyway that this is mouse y if you can see whenever i hover my mouse and uh, when i move my mouse it shows me the x and y coordinates for the shadow if you can observe if i move to towards top left the x and y value increases meaning it will go away from the top left corner of the screen because i am moving my mouse to the towards the top left corner this is exactly what i want wherever the mouse goes the shadow should go away from the mouse so this is exactly what is happening now what do we do we set the shadow for the text how do we do that we do that by using the property called style on our name element so we had this element uh, name element is document dot get element by id name okay the name has a property called style style has also property called text shadow which is what we want to give 
so name dot style dot text shadow z although i'll use a template strings which is uh, a very easy way to embed any data of a variable into string so that you don't have to do something like this uh, string is equal to plus variable data which is what the case earlier so write template string what i'll do is i'll give some shadow the way we give shadow to a particular element is I'll show you text shadow is first we give the x coordinate offset offset towards horizontal axis and uh, vertical offset and then we specify the blur amount of blur so we'll do the same thing here we'll embed our uh, shadows x coordinate in pixel similarly our shadows y coordinate pixel and let's give the blur as 10 pixels so if we take a look at this now look at this this looks really cool but uh, but if you see the original effect this doesn't look like this the reason is we have given a very fixed fixed blur amount so let's change that the effect that we are looking for is the farther we are from the text the blur effect should increase so instead of giving 10 here directly what we can do is we can give the shadows x or y whichever is maximum that itself has the value for the blur effect if i do that uh, as you can see there is some jitter the reason is this shadow x and shadow y both value can go to negative a negative blur amount doesn't make much sense so what we'll do is we'll take the positive values actual absolute values so of both x and y of the shadow so how do we take that math dot absolute function shadow dot x and uh, take the absolute value of y shadow dot y now once we have the absolute value we can use that value instead of this y values absolute to get our shadow effect but if you can observe this this is also not centered the shadow is not centered like it is here uh, okay let's fix that we just need to give a little bit of offset in y direction and x direction so that the, the shadow is not centered at the top left of the text okay so how do we do that we'll do it here the shadow will have offset added what should be the offset the width of this text divided by two half the width of this text that should fix it in the horizontal direction yes that pretty much fixes it and we'll add some offset to the y height divided by two half the height we have added so this gives a similar effect there is one little thing that we could do so, uh, if you can clearly observe as we are uh, near to this text the shadow is more pronounced or uh, the shadow is more clear which is not the case here we need to get a lot near to this so we can set, what we can do is we can set a minimum shadow minimum shadow of uh, let's say 10 pixels or 6 pixels so that even if x and y values go lesser than 6 the minimum should be always 6 the way we do that is let's take the maximum of whatever either this value or 6 so that at least the shadow spread will be 6 pixels so if you can see now this is a little bit better 
also if you want to dec decrease the spreading effect whenever the mouse is near you can do so by subtracting some amount from the dispersion like this this creates a really nice tidy shadow effect one more thing that you can do one more interesting thing that you can do is you can make this heading editable content editable if you do that you can actually add your name this is cool you can add your name or whatever the text that you want to add here this looks really cool so guys hope you enjoyed this Thank you so much. If you like the video, I'll be posting a lot more of tutorials on web development, mobile development, uh, competitive programming, whatever the hell that I can, just uh, whenever I get time. So please do like and subscribe. Thank you.